Philip was left grappling with his own turmoil. How could he ever reveal the truth about his ghostly existence to Funke? The thought of her running away in fear or thinking he was crazy weighed heavily on his mind. With a heavy heart, Philip resolved to keep his secret hidden and continued pretending that he didn't love Funke. Once upon a time, in the heart of Nigeria, there lived a young man named Philip. He was 28 years old and full of dreams. Philip grew up with his loving parents in a small village, surrounded by the beauty of nature and the warmth of his community. As he grew older, Philip felt the urge to explore beyond the borders of his village, to seek new opportunities and experiences. One day, Philip made the decision to travel to Onicha, a bustling city to serve his master. His master was a kind and generous person who took Philip under his wing and treated him like family. Philip worked tirelessly, showing dedication and loyalty to his master's business. Over the years, he became an invaluable asset and was loved by everyone around him. After five years of hard work and dedication, Philip's master decided to reward him for his loyalty. He gifted Philip with a large sum of money, a beautiful house, and a shiny new car. Philip was overjoyed and grateful for his master's kindness. He knew he had to share his good fortune with his family back in the village. With excitement in his heart, Philip returned to his village to surprise his family with the wonderful news. When he arrived, his family greeted him with open arms and tears of joy. They celebrated his success and thanked his master for his generosity. Philip felt immense happiness seeing the smiles on his family's faces. However, Philip knew that it was time for him to embark on a new journey. He wanted to start his own business in the city and make a name for himself. So with determination and courage, he packed his bags and set out for the city once again. As Philip boarded the bus to the city, little did he know a tragedy would strike. On the way, the bus was involved in a terrible accident and Philip, along with everyone else on board, lost their lives. The news of Philip's untimely death sent shockwaves through the village. His family rushed to the scene, hoping against hope that he would miraculously be alive. But alas, it was not to be. Heartbroken and devastated, Philip's family brought his lifeless body back to the village. They held a solemn burial ceremony, mourning the loss of their beloved son and brother. As they laid Philip to rest, his spirit lingered, unable to find peace. He cried out to his family, wanting to comfort them in their grief, but they could not see or hear him. Days passed, and Philip's spirit remained restless, unable to find solace in his village. He made the decision to leave and travel far away to another country in Africa. With a heavy heart, he bid farewell to his village and embarked on a journey into the unknown. But even in death, Philip's spirit continued to wander, searching for the peace that had eluded him in life. After bidding farewell to his village, Philip journeyed to a new country in East Africa. As he arrived, he noticed something remarkable. People could see him. This filled Philip's heart with joy, for he had been invisible to those in his village after his passing. With newfound hope and determination, Philip set out to achieve his dreams in this new land. He found a small apartment to rent 
and soon secured a job at a local factory. Philip worked tirelessly, pouring his heart and soul into his job, and his efforts did not go unnoticed. He was loved and respected by all who knew him. At the factory, Philip met a fellow Nigerian named Toby. They quickly became friends, bonding over their shared heritage and experiences. Toby would often visit Philip's apartment after work, and they would spend hours sharing stories and laughter. One day, as they sat in Philip's cozy living room, Toby couldn't help but marvel at the size of the apartment. He remarked, Philip, how were you able to afford such a big place on our salary? I can barely afford to buy a chair for my own living room. Philip hesitated for a moment, unsure of how to respond. Then, with a smile, he replied, Oh, you know, Toby, my family back in Nigeria is quite wealthy. They have supported me financially. So I decided to rent this place and focus on my work instead of idling away. Toby nodded, impressed by Philip's supposed family wealth. From then on, he would occasionally ask Philip for financial assistance, which Philip never hesitated to provide. As time passed, Philip's friendship with Toby grew stronger. They shared everything, their hopes, dreams, and even their fears. One day, Toby excitedly informed Philip that his sister Funke would be coming from Nigeria to look for a job at their factory. Philip smiled at the news and eagerly awaited Funke's arrival. When she finally came, Toby introduced her to Philip with pride. Funke greeted Philip warmly, telling him she had heard a lot of things about him. Philip grinned and jokingly asked, Oh, really? And were they good things or bad things? Funke laughed and assured him, Oh, all good things, of course. Grateful for Philip's kindness towards her brother, Funke thanked him sincerely. Philip waved off her gratitude, saying, It's nothing, really. I'm just glad to help. That evening, Funke cooked a delicious meal for them all to enjoy. They shared stories and laughter late into the night before bidding farewell as Toby and Funke headed back to their own home. As Philip watched them walk away, a warm feeling washed over him. He couldn't help but think to himself, Funke is the one. And with that thought, Philip's heart swelled with hope for the future. The next day, Philip and Toby accompanied Funke to meet with their manager. The manager was impressed by Funke's qualifications and immediately offered her a job at the factory. Funke happily accepted and began working alongside Philip and Toby. From the moment Funke started working, Philip couldn't help but notice her. Whenever their eyes met, she would smile at him, filling his heart with warmth. Toby too noticed the way Philip looked at Funke and couldn't help but wonder if there was something more between them. One day, as they were walking together, Toby couldn't contain his curiosity any longer. He turned to Philip and asked, Philip, do you like my sister Funke? Philip was caught off guard by the question and quickly brushed it off saying, Oh, Toby. We are like family, nothing more. Despite Philip's dismissal, Toby couldn't shake the feeling that there was something brewing between his friend and sister. As days passed, Funke became an intrigual part of their little group. She would often cook delicious meals for them at Philip's house, and sometimes they would even spend the night together sharing stories and laughter late into the night. One fateful day, tragedy struck when Funke fell ill at work. 
Philip immediately sprang into action, carrying her on his back and rushing her to the hospital. He was filled with worry and prayed for her recovery. Toby watched as his friend showed such care and love for his sister. He felt a deep sense of gratitude towards Philip for everything he had done for Funke. Thankfully, Funke's condition improved and she was soon back on her feet. She expressed her gratitude to Philip and Toby for being by her side through it all. Weeks went by and Funke found herself unable to stop thinking about Philip. She realized that her feelings for him had grown beyond friendship. She was madly in love with him. Summoning all her courage, Funke confided in her brother Toby about her feelings. Toby, knowing what a good person Philip was, encouraged her to tell him how she felt. With a nervous heart, Funke went to Philip's house one evening after work. Philip was surprised to see her alone and asked about Toby's whereabouts. Funke assured him that Toby was fine and they spent the evening together. As the night wore on, Funke mustered up the courage to confess her love for Philip. His reaction was not what she had expected. He was shocked and unable to speak. After a moment of silence, Philip finally managed to say, I'm sorry, Funke, but you wouldn't want to end up with someone like me. I'm not who you think I am. But Funke wouldn't hear all of it. She poured her heart out to Philip, telling him how much she admired his kindness and how deeply she loved him. Despite her heartfelt confession, Philip remained firm in his decision. He asked Funke to go home and promised to talk to her the next day. As Funke left Philip's house, she couldn't shake the feeling of sadness that washed over her. She hoped against hope that Philip would come to love her too. Meanwhile, Philip was left grappling with his own turmoil. How could he ever reveal the truth about his ghostly existence to Funke? The thought of her running away in fear or thinking he was crazy weighed heavily on his mind. With a heavy heart, Philip resolved to keep his secret hidden and continue pretending that he didn't love Funke. But deep down, he knew that he would only bring more pain and heartache in the end. As time passed, Philip's avoidance of Funke only served to deepen her sadness. He wouldn't look at her, speak to her, or even acknowledge her presence. Funke felt her heart breaking with each passing day, unable to understand why Philip was treating her so coldly. Toby noticed the change in Philip's behavior and grew increasingly worried. He approached Philip one day and asked, Philip, is there something wrong with my sister? Why are you avoiding her? Philip tried to brush off Toby's concern, insisting that everything was fine. But Toby could see through his facade and knew that something was amiss. As the days went by and Philip's avoidance continued, Funke couldn't bear it any longer. She decided to confront him once and for all. One evening after work, Funke went to Philip's house and refused to leave despite his protests. She took charge of the situation, cooking a meal for him and demanding answers. Why have you been treating me like this, Philip? Funke demanded, her voice filled with hurt and frustration. Am I not good enough for you? Why won't you talk to me? Philip remained silent, unable to find the words to explain his actions. Funke's anger boiled over as she accused him of being a coward and taunting him to speak up. Unable to bear seeing Funke in such distress, Philip put her into a tight embrace, 
whispering apologies in her ear. Their silence was heavy with emotion. And in that moment, they shared the kiss that changed everything. That night, Fuke stayed at Philip's house, her heart lighter than it had been in days. Philip woke up early the next morning, preparing breakfast for Funke and serving it to her in bed. Funke was overjoyed by his gestures of love and gratitude. After breakfast, Funke hurried home to get ready for work, her mind buzzing with happiness and excitement. She couldn't wait to share the news with her brother Toby. Meanwhile, Philip couldn't shake the feeling of guilt that weighed heavily on his heart. He knew that he had hurt Funke with his actions, but he also knew that being with her was the right thing to do. As Philip arrived at work that morning, he was greeted by Toby's smiling face. Toby wasted no time in asking about the event of the previous night. Philip couldn't contain his joy as he confessed his love for Funke and his desire to be with her. Toby hugged Philip tightly, thanking him for making his sister's dreams come true. But he also jokingly warned Philip not to break Funke's heart, knowing how much she meant to him. Throughout the day, Funke and Philip walked side by side, stealing glances and sharing secrets, smiles whenever their eyes met. Their love had blossomed against all odds, and they knew that they were meant to be together. As Funke and Philip's love continued to blossom, they became inseparable. Philip, wanting the best for Funke, suggested she learn a skill instead of continuing to work at the factory. He generously paid for her training and provided all the necessary resources. Funke happily embarked on her new journey, pouring her heart into her training and excelling in no time. After graduating, Funke's dreams came true as Philip opened a magnificent salon for her. With a team of talented stylists working under her, Funke's salon quickly became the talk of the town. Toby rejoiced at his sister's success. Grateful for the day she crossed paths with Philip. Philip's entrepreneurial spirit didn't stop there. He ventured into other businesses, even entrusting one of his companies to Toby to manage. Together, they bid farewell to the factory, eager to embrace their new endeavors. As their relationship flourished, Philip decided it was time to take the next step. He proposed to Funke, and she joyfully accepted. In no time, they moved into a lavish mansion, convinced that Philip was from a wealthy family and that Philip's family wealth would sustain them. Despite their happiness, Funke grew impatient for their wedding day. She longed to be Philip's wife and start a family with him. However, year after, after year passed without any progress towards their marriage. After four years of engagement, Funke couldn't bear the uncertainty any longer. Determined to move their relationship forward, she decided to take matters into her own hands. She stopped taking her birth control pills. Soon, Funke became pregnant, hoping that the news would prompt Philip to finally marry her. When she broke the news to Philip, he was shocked beyond belief. Never in his widest dreams did he imagine he could father a child being a ghost. Despite his disbelief, Philip kept his true identity hidden and pretended to be overjoyed at the news. That night, Philip wrestled with his thoughts. He realized that if he could father a child, then perhaps... Marrying Funke and starting a family was the right path for him. After much contemplation, he resolved to go through with the marriage and live out his eternity in the country they reside with Funke and their future children.
The next day, Philip informed Funke of their impending court wedding, shocking her with the suddenness of the decision. Why Funke had hoped for a traditional wedding in Nigeria, Philip assured her that they could have one later on. Reluctantly, Funke agreed to the court wedding, eager to finally become Mrs. Philip. With Toby's assistance, they threw themselves into wedding preparations. They visited the market, hired an event planner, and made all the necessary arrangements. Funke couldn't contain her excitement at the thought of marrying the love of her life. As the wedding day drew nearer, Funke's heart swelled with anticipation. Little did she know, Philip harbored a secret that could change everything. The wedding day downed bright and beautiful, filled with promise and excitement. As Funke and Philip stood before the registrar, exchanging vows and rings, Funke couldn't help but notice the absence of Philip's family members. Her heart filled with worry. Funke approached Philip after the ceremony and asked him why none of his family had attended. Philip reassured her explaining that they were unable to make it due to his younger sister's traditional wedding taking place the same day. He assured Funke that they would celebrate with his family soon. Though she wasn't entirely satisfied with his explanation, Funke chose to let the matter rest, focusing instead on the joyous celebration that followed. Their manager from the factory stood in as Philip's family for the registry process. And Funke's own parents and some family members had made the journey from Nigeria to be there. The wedding reception was a grand affair, filled with laughter, music and dancing. Their business partners, friends and well-wishers all gathered to celebrate the newly weds. Food and drinks flowed freely and everyone ate and drank to their heart's content. After the festivities, Funke and Philip returned to their mansion, grateful for the love and support they had received on their special day. They were now officially Mr. and Mrs. Philip, ready to embark on the journey of married life together. As time went on, Funke began to notice some strange behavior from Philip. He started transferring all his properties in her name, leaving her puzzled and confused. When she confronted him about it, Philip simply brushed it off, saying that they were now married and she would share everything together. Though she harbored doubts, Funke chose to trust her husband and let the matter go. Nine months later, they welcomed their first child, a beautiful baby girl whom they named Purity. She was a precious gift and they showered her with love and affection. As Purity grew, Funke and Philip's family expanded with the arrival of twin boys David and Daniel and later a baby girl named Divine. Their home was filled with laughter and joy and Funke and Philip were determined to give their children the best life possible. With their family complete, Funke decided to undergo family planning to prevent any more pregnancies. Together, she and Philip dedicated themselves to raising their children, ensuring that they had everything they needed to thrive and succeed in life. As they watched their children grow and flourish, Funke and Philip's love for each other only deepened. As months passed after the birth of the vine, Funke found herself pledged by strange dreams. Night after night, she would see her husband Philip inside a grave. Filling her with fear and dread, she couldn't shake the feeling of impending doom that lingered after each dream. One night, unable to bear the weight of her fears any longer, Funke woke Philip from his sleep. Her heart pounding with anxiety. She prayed for his safety, begging whatever higher power was listening to spare him from harm. 
Feeling her distress, Philip held Funke close, soothing her with gentle words of, of reassurance. But deep down, he knew that his secrets were beginning to unravel, and he feared the consequences of his deception. In an effort to confront the growing tension between them, Funke summoned the courage to call Philip for a meeting. As they sat together, she poured out her heart, expressing her concerns about their lack of connection with his family. My love, please tell me the truth. Funke pleaded, why have we never visited your family in all the years we have been married? Is there something you are hiding from me? Philip's heart clenched at her words, knowing that he could no longer avoid the truth. With a heavy heart, he assured Funke that there was no problem with his family and promised to make amends. He vowed that they would travel to visit his family for Christmas, hoping to ease Funke's worries. Relieved by Philip's response, Funke enveloped him in a tight embrace, grateful for his willingness to do the right thing. She eagerly began making plans for their trip, excited to finally meet her husband's relatives after so many years. Meanwhile, Purity, David, and Daniel continued to excel in school, bringing pride and joy to their parents with their intelligence and diligence. Funke and Philip watched with admiration as their children blossomed into bright and capable young individuals. Funke reached out to Toby, her brother, who had also married and relocated to a different country. She excitedly shared the news of their upcoming trip to Nigeria and Toby couldn't contain his happiness at the thought of finally reconnecting with Philip's family. As the days passed, Philip's heart grew heavy with guilt and dread. He knew that returning to Nigeria meant facing the truth of his existence, that he was not human but a ghost trapped between worlds. The thought of leaving his family behind filled him with anguish, but he knew that he had no choice but to confront his past. Despite his inner turmoil, Philip resolved to do what was necessary to protect his family and keep his secrets hidden. But as the day of their trip drew nearer, he couldn't shake the feeling of impending doom that hung over him like a dark cloud, threatening to shatter the fragile peace he had worked so hard to maintain. As the day of their journey to Nigeria approached, Funke busied herself with preparations. She packed their bags with clothes, toiletries, and gifts for Philip's family. She went to the market to buy fresh produce and ingredients for cooking, ensuring that they would have everything they needed for their trip. Funke also took the time to make sure her children looked their best. She styled their hair, bought them new clothes and shoes, and showered them with love and attention in anticipation of their visit to their father's homeland. Meanwhile, Philip's behavior grew increasingly erratic. He seemed to be more affectionate towards Funke and the children, constantly showering them with gifts and flowers. Funke couldn't help but feel a sense of unease, wondering what was behind her husband's sudden change in demeanor. Despite her worries, Funke tried to reassure herself that Philip was simply being caring and attentive. She pushed aside her concerns and focused on the excitement of their upcoming trip. Unknown to Funke, Philip was making secret preparations of his own. He divided his assets among his children and wife, ensuring that they would be well taken care of in his absence. He carefully concealed the document in a bag in their mansion. He also wrote a letter explaining his actions and the truth about his existence as a ghost and placed it in his back pocket. On the day of their journey, the family made their way to the airport, their hearts filled with anticipation and excitement. Funke and the children were beaming with smiles and laughter, eager to embark on their adventure. During the flight, Philip claimed to be feeling airsick and spent most of the journey sleeping. Funke caught up in the excitement of the moment, didn't think much of it, and focused on comforting him. 
Finally, they landed in Nigeria and a car was waiting to pick them up. As they drove towards Philip's village, Funke couldn't contain her excitement, her eyes sparkling with anticipation. Little did she know, the truth that awaited her in Philip's village would shatter her world and change her life forever. As the car approached Philip's compound, he asked the driver to stop so he could ease himself. He instructed the driver to drive into the compound ahead of him. Why he pretended to renate by the roadside. Okay, and the children watched as Philip stepped out of the car, feeling a sense of excitement and anticipation. But as he drove into the compound, Funke's heart sank. The house did not look like the home of a wealthy family at all. She began to wonder if Philip had been lying to her about his family's wealth all along. Quietly, she stepped out of the car with the children as Philip's parents and sister emerged from the house. Funke greeted them warmly, introducing herself as Philip's wife and the children as his. But instead of the warm welcome she expected, she was met with confusion and disbelief. Philip's parents and sister were stunned, asking where Philip was. Funke explained that he had stepped out to ease himself, but hadn't returned. Philip's sister rushed outside to look for him, but he was nowhere to be found. Panic began to rise in Funke's chest as he tried to call Philip's phone, but it wouldn't connect. Finally, Philip's father stepped forward and shattered the illusion. He revealed the truth. Philip has died many years ago and was buried in the family grave. He showed Funke the grave and Philip's picture, leaving her stunned and heartbroken. Desperate for answers, Funke retrieved a family photo from the car, hoping to prove that Philip was real. But as she looked at the photo, she realized the truth. Philip was not there. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she realized that she had married a ghost. Overwhelmed with grief and confusion, Funke fainted. Philip's family rushed to her side, carrying her and the children into the house. When Funke regained consciousness, she found herself surrounded by Philip's family, who offered her comfort and support. Philip's father performed a ritual to cleanse away the deception that had been done, and Funke felt a sense of peace wash over her. But the pain of realizing that her husband was no more, was still fresh in her heart. After some time with Philip's family, Funke made the difficult decision to return to her own family in her state. She needed to share the truth of what had happened with her loved ones and begin to heal the pain of losing her husband. A husband who had been nothing more than a ghost all along. After returning to their base with her children, Funke found herself grappling with the reality of her husband's absence. She stumbled upon Philip's will and realized that he had left everything to her and their children. Determined to start afresh, Funke sold most of their assets and decided to return to Nigeria, the place where everything had begun. Back in Nigeria, Funke and her children began to rebuild their lives, though she had left behind the pain of being married to a ghost. The memories lingered, haunting her every turn. But with Toby by her side, offering comfort and support, Funke found the strength to carry on. In time, Funke made the decision to return to Philip's village. She felt a sense of responsibilities towards his family, knowing that they had been left behind by his untimely departure. With determination in her heart, Funke set out to make a difference in their lives. First, she built a large, beautiful house for Philip's parents, ensuring that they would have a comfortable place to call home. She then started a business for them, providing them with a source of income to sustain themselves. But Funke's generosity didn't stop there. She also gave them a substantial sum of money, enough to secure their future and provide for their needs. And when she learned that Philip's sister had dreams of forging her education, Funke stepped in to help, sending her back to school to pursue her dreams. As the years passed, 
Fuke remained committed to her promise of ensuring that none of Philip's family suffered or lacked anything. She continued to support them financially and emotionally, always there to lend a helping hand whenever they needed it. But amidst her efforts to support Philip's family, Funke never forgot about her own children. She poured all her love and energy into ensuring that they had the best possible upbringing, guiding them and encouraging them to pursue their dreams. And so, as time went on, Funke's children grew up to be strong, confident individuals, each carving out their own path in life. And though the pain of losing their father still lingered, Funke found solace in knowing that she had done everything in her power to honor his memory and ensure that his family was taken care of. And with that, the story of Funke, Philip and their journey came to an end. It was a tale of love, loss and resilience, reminding us that even in the face of adversity, there is always hope for a brighter tomorrow. Thank you for watching this captivating story about Philip and Funke on African stories. If you liked it and felt inspired with your journey, please show your support by clicking the like button, sharing with your friends, and leaving a comment below. To see more interesting stories and learn about different cultures, subscribe to African Stories, and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss a new story. Your support means a lot and helps us bring more stories to you. Until we meet again, stay connected. Stay inspired and keep smiling.